Okay, so we'll take a quick look at what's under the website submenu. So the first thing we have on the list is basic information. So right now my website is set to a business website, which is what I chose when I created my account. Now you might have either commerce, nonprofit, personal, or business, depending on what you chose. And then we're going to pick site description. I'm not going to type up a new one. I'm just going to copy and paste what I have on my own personal website. Now I'm going to give you guys a tip that's going to save you a lot of headache, okay? If you just copy and paste from another website, you see how this font looks kind of weird and large compared, compared to like the rest of the fonts here? So what happened is it actually took the style of the text that was here. So when you copy and paste text, you want to click right here where it says paste as plain text. And then now it's a smaller font. It's the proper font. It's how it should look. Okay. You also have the option of turning off Squarespace promotion. What that is, is if your website's a really good looking website and Squarespace thinks so, it'll actually include it and promote it for you. So for example, if we go to, this is like the initial um, registration page. So from here, let's say we had picked this template, right? If you actually scroll down instead of previewing, it'll show you what companies are using this page. So these are actual websites created using this specific template. Now you could be included in there if Squarespace thinks that you're worthy. Okay, so now that we have that set up, let's go ahead and save and we'll go back and then we'll go into domains. So domain is what people actually type in up here to come to your website. So this is what it's set to right now. And I don't really like it, but this is what comes free with the trial. When you actually purchase a plan, you'll actually get a free domain. So if you go here and you type in what domain you would ideally want, so .ca or .com, it'll give you a list of what's available. So pretty much anything that's $20, it's free and included um, with your actual package. But anything more than that, you'll have to pay the difference. Okay. And then we'll go ahead and go back. And if you have a domain that you bought from GoDaddy or Namecheap, you can actually connect that here. It's pretty straightforward. Most of the popular ones, it does automatically. But anything like one and one, I believe, you'd have to actually go in and change the um, domain name settings yourself. Now we'll go into email. This is actually pretty cool. You can actually get a domain email. So if I got a domain that was www.abgtech.ca, I could get an email that's info at abgtech.ca. So first of all, you'd have to connect a domain before you can do that. But this email is connected to Google Apps. So you'll get pretty much anything that's included with Google Apps included with your email address. Now, social media is definitely a major part of a website, especially because it helps with your SEO quite a bit. Now, Squarespace makes this very easy. You just have to go to connected accounts and then you can click on connect account and then you pick which uh, social media platform you want to connect. Some of them actually cause like you have to log in before you can use it. For example, Instagram. And what that does is it gives you the option to pretty much pull all your data from Instagram. So all your images and display it on a page so you can have like a stream of images. And you can do the same for Facebook or Twitter. I'll actually add one of my accounts or maybe a few of my accounts just so you can see how the process goes. So I'll click on connect account. We'll do Facebook first. I'm already signed into Facebook, so it should automatically sign me in here. There we go. And then the pop-up comes up. So it'll show the social icon. So it'll show up where we want it to. Um, I'll show you where it's going to show actually. And then this is my Facebook profile. And I don't want to show that. I actually want to show the ABG tech page. Okay, and then we'll hit save. So now down here where I have the icon, it'll actually show up. Now any social media that I add here will show up here. So for example, if I connect Twitter next, let's go ahead and find Twitter. Let's search for it actually Twitter. There we go. Now this one, I'll probably just sign in to my personal account and then authorize. And then there we go. So now Twitter's added and Maybe I want to hide this from the footer, but I still want it to be connected. I would do this. So now in the footer, it's not actually showing up. If you want to add it, you just check off where it says show social icon. And where the option for download data is, that's how you actually download data from Twitter so you can display it on a page. And I'll show you that later on in one of the lectures as well. Okay, so that was a connected accounts. Next up is marketing. And the first option in marketing is for SEO. And in here we can fill in our search engine description, which is what shows up underneath your website's URL on Google or Bing or anything like that. So again, I'll just copy and paste my website description from my personal website. Okay. Now this one is only plain text there. So there's no option to actually paste this plain text. 
uh, home page title format so what you want your home page to look at so right now is just set as percent s which if we go up here is the title of our website so it would show Udemy website and then collection would be things like blog so what the blog would show as and right now it's percent c so which is um, which so would be blog and then title and then finally item so this is like a, a specific blog post would show up as the blog the name of the blog post okay so we'll go ahead and save that description that we put in there and we'll go back and then we have share buttons so these are buttons that appear at the bottom of blog pages and it allows people to share to different social media I usually like to check off everything because why not like they can share wherever they'd like to it gives me more exposure and then pin it buttons again those are the little buttons that show up in the corner that let people pin I like to enable it just for blogs so that button doesn't show up all the time so it'll look like this and we can change how it looks like we can make it smaller large and we can make it rectangle or circle and white red or gray so we'll save we'll go back and then Facebook page okay so this option lets us link our Facebook page to our specific gallery page so for example if I sync up ABG tech which is my actual um, Facebook page which is right over here it'll actually add a tab to the left side here that'll say gallery now another neat thing we can do is actually install a page so one of the pages I have up here so home about news read me I can put one of those on the side here as well so it's a really cool way to keep things synced up if you'd like now I won't set it up but you can and then next up we have Google AdWords credit so you get a credit so $100 credit with any um, business plan that you have with Squarespace it's a neat little way to start advertising your website and marketing it. Next, we'll go to blogging. So here we have, we can change how the URL is. So how this is on a blog post. So right now it's set to be my website slash the year it was posted slash the month it was posted slash the date it was posted and then slash the title. I don't really like that. I, I usually like it just to be the title. So I'll leave it like this. And then for comments, we'll first save that and then enabling comments. I love to enable comments just because when people leave comments, that's bringing more traffic to your website and giving you more social validation. So I'll enable that. And then we'll head on back. Now discuss is a way that people can leave comments using discuss instead of Squarespace's built in commenting system. I don't really use discuss too much, so I won't be putting anything in here. I find that the system that Squarespace has naturally works pretty well. Okay, so simple liking is enabled so people don't have to be signed in. So that's fine. And accelerated mobile pages. We'll turn that on because that's actually a really cool way that people can share your blog post to social media. So we'll actually hit save and we'll go back. So next up we have security and SSL. This is actually a feature that just came to Squarespace very recently. Before, what would happen is any checkout page where people would put in their transaction information like your credit card information and all that, that was SSL, so it, it was very secure. But now the entire website can be secured. So by default, that's turned off, but we'll go ahead and click secure. And then down here, you can set a password to your website if it's still under development. I keep that disabled just so if I'm working with a the client, they can see their website without logging in. And then we'll go ahead and go back. And then the final thing under the website tab is advanced. So here we have the 404 page. So if you had a website page that you deleted, but people still go to it, it'll automatically take them to a 404 page, which looks like this. And then they can just click through to one of your other pages instead. Okay, so you can actually make that your home page. So any anytime they visit a website page that's been taken down, it redirects them to the home. But I like to leave it at 404 so they know that the page doesn't exist anymore and they stop linking it. So now we can change the default text editor if you would like from rich text to markdown. I would say leave it as rich text just because markdown makes it a little bit harder to get stuff entered. Okay, so now we'll go to escape key. So this is basically login with escape key. So if you're not signed in, if somebody comes to your website and they want to sign in, they just press escape. This makes it really easy when you're still developing the website, but I think it's kind of like an unneeded feature once it's gone live. So I'll actually disable it now because I can almost guarantee that I'll forget to disable it later because I don't want users to be able to log into the website by pressing escape. Now import and export is an extremely important part of Squarespace. 
If you ever decide to leave Squarespace or come to Squarespace after using one of these CMSs, you can easily bring in all of your blog posts from there. So WordPress, Tumblr, the older version of Squarespace, Blogger, Shopify, or Big Cartel. So it'll save you quite a bit of time having to copy and paste your actual blog posts all over again. So next up we have external services. So here we can add our Google Analytics account number if we want a little bit more analytic information than what Squarespace itself provides. And then your Amazon associate tag. So if you're ever selling products and you want to collect your actual referral money from Amazon, you can enter your tag right here. And then developer mode, it opens up Squarespace so you can actually change anything about it that you that you want. I would say keep it off unless you know what you're doing just because once you turn it on, it doesn't actually, the website won't update anymore. So Squarespace will stop updating it because it looks like you know what you're doing. Okay, so make sure you leave that off. And then code injection. We're actually going to come back to this later on because this is extremely important. Um, here you can add things like your Google Analytics code if you don't want to use the tag in the previous section. Um, you can add code to the footer, the header, the locked pages, all that kind of good stuff. Okay. And then we have URL mapping. This kind of goes along with the 404 page earlier, and it adds a little bit of features to that. So let's say you had a blog and it was originally your website slash blog, and then you changed it to a website slash info and tips. You can actually redirect the website so that anybody who visits your old blog gets redirected to the new blog. So again, extremely good if you're making a lot of big changes. And then finally is image exif. By default, this is turned off. What it does is anytime you upload an image to Squarespace, it'll pull in the title of the image and the tags if you have that populated already. Um, most images that you upload won't have that anyways, but you can enable it just so that you can save a second or two when you import images that do have that. So we can do that there and then we'll go back and back again. And that covers everything in the website section. And the next time, We'll go over the commerce section and then finally we'll be done with setting up the settings and we can move into the actual website.